This is Chris Adams of Body Slam the Competition. We're going to be going over the Night of the Champions predictions for tonight, uh, September the 19th, 2015. And starting off with the opening match, or as they like to refer to it, the kickoff match. That just means you weren't good enough to get to the pay per view, I guess. Lucha Dragons and Neville versus the Stardust and Ascension, also known as the Cosmic Wasteland. Now, these guys, Ascension, have been around for a little bit, probably misused. I'm not a big fan of them, but um, Stardust, I kind of wish we'd get a little bit of a break. He's been around for a bit. I don't know if they're going to give him that break he wants tonight. Uh, so far, he's kind of been stuck mid-card and mid-card jobbing at that, and Neville's real popular right now, and they want to put him over. So I'm pretty sure winner of this match is going to be Neville and the Lucha Dragons, or that's my call for it anyways. Uh, opening match of the night, uh, New Day versus the Dudley Boys. So we go from New Day Rocks to Get the Tables. You pick your tune, which one you like. Preferably, I believe, the road to the titles now goes through Dudleyville, and whoever wants it is going to come through some tables and ladders and chairs next month or whenever that pay-per-view is, I should say. I'm not sure if it's next month or not. I believe it's getting nearby, though. It's about that time of year. Uh, so my pick for the match is the Dudley Boys. Even though they just came back and got that number one contendership real quick, uh, not that fair to primetime players. They should have more of a shot at it. Uh, but the tag division, once again, has kind of gone stale with just a new day in primetime players. The Usos haven't come back together yet. Um... The Ascension, once again, is just not, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, I don't like them that much, they don't have that much charisma to me as a team, I guess, I mean, at least not for the WWE, maybe in the NXT they're hot stuff, maybe in the Ring of Honor they'd be great, but I don't like them in the situation they're in. Uh, Lucha Dragons and Los Matadores for the tag division, forget it, I don't care about them, they're just not, not entertaining enough for me. To move on, just, let's move on from that. It's a dead horse I can beat all night. Um, Ziggler versus Rusev. Now, while these two talents are both both really good talents, I just cannot get the feel for this angle they're working. It doesn't work for me. Lana's hurt now anyway. Can't be there, so it kind of takes that aspect away from it. I'm just hoping that they squash it tonight and squash it hard with Rusev putting him down and put them down, you know, legally, just pinning them or making them submit, whatever. And I'm going to call Rusev for the win. Uh, next, we've got Ambrose Reigns and the mystery partner versus the Wyatt family. Now, the Wyatt family have really, really built themselves up with uh, this, so what's his name, Braun Strowman? Or Stro Brahman, I don't know. Big dude, we'll call him. Okay, he uh, has come in and practically choked everybody out that he's been against, uh, including Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, on a couple of occasions, and uh, one of the Uso brothers that was tagging with him not too long ago. They put down Randy Orton and um, left you wondering if he's going to come back anytime soon. They have a mystery partner. Who could it be? Uh, several rumors floating around. Um, Probably anybody short of the rock is not going to matter at this point. Although, um, a Daniel Bryan might be a welcome addition to that since he's fought against the Wyatt family before. Um, personally, I think it's probably going to be Eric Rowan. That's traditional WWE stuff that disappoints people. So, I could see it being Eric Rowan coming in and getting hyped up over it at first and then him getting squashed pretty quick again as it's been going on for him. Um, I haven't heard how his injury status is, so I don't know for sure if it could be him or not. Last I heard, Daniel Bryan was cleared by one doctor, not by another, or not by the WWE's doctor or something, so it may be 50-50 for him. I don't see The Rock coming back just for the Night of Champions. He's more of a WrestleMania or SummerSlam return kind of guy. And um, other than that, you know, there's not very many more people I guess it could be other than maybe Chris Jericho. Jericho and White, if you remember not too long ago, had something going on. So that could uh, be Jericho coming back. That would be a big crowd pop if it was so. 
but um, in the past when they've had mystery partners, mystery partners usually means that team ends up winning because they got that momentum built up with the mystery partner. I think it's due to Roman Reigns and Ambrose, and I know people out there are yelling at me already, my ears are burning, what do you mean they get their dues? I, for the past several weeks on TV, they've been choked out for crying out loud by this guy non-stop over and over. Give him a break. I mean, it's time. He's not unbeatable. You know, they're going to get something over on him in this match. And I don't know if he's the one that gets pinned or if one of, the, one of the others gets pinned. But I believe Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and the mystery partner pulls out the victory tonight. Uh, next we have Nikki Bella versus Charlotte. Uh, I don't understand the big deal of Nikki Bella, why people hate her so much. I think she's turned into a pretty pretty good wrestler. Uh, she surpassed her sister, who was supposed to be the better of the two, and kind of left her in her dust. Um, good performer. They're, they're kind of, that kind of air about them on the mic that you like for a heel to where they think they're, they know they're better than you or think they're better than you and they play it off real well. But a lot of people are mad she broke AJ Lee's record. I don't understand the love for AJ Lee and CM Punk so much. I mean, I liked them, but they left. They said, forget it, I'm retired, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. That means you, the fans, they want nothing, nothing to do with you. So why do you care if they break the record? It's not a big deal to me. If uh, Nikki Bella was to hold on to the belt tonight, it wouldn't hurt my feelings, but I think Charlotte's going to take off with the win tonight and at least hold the belt for a little bit. You may see Nikki get it back on Monday Night Raw or the next pay-per-view maybe, but I think Charlotte's going to have it at least for right now, and she very well may hold it for a little while now. You know, you may be seeing the Bellas taking a break. They've been going nonstop for a good solid year now, so who knows. Uh, last time, uh, Charlotte, so I'm calling for the win. Uh, Ryback versus Kevin Owens. As much as I want Ryback to succeed and look good, his mic skills are just not all the way there. He somewhat has it. He's getting better with it. He's connecting with the fans better. He's definitely strong and talented. Um, he's got a good set of power moves. I think maybe he could add a couple more things to it. I would love to see him add a running power slam to that mix, like the British Bulldog used to do. That would be awesome. To go with that great clothesline he has and the Shell Shock movie uses, a running power slam would be great for him. Um, I would like to see him pull off the power slam Randy Orton pulls off, like Rick Steiner used to do. That would be great. Just more, more power moves from him. Not just the set three or four that he uses, and that's it. Then he goes for his clothesline. Add something to his repertoire there. Um, he deserved the title when he got it because he'd been working hard for stuff. And he's had it for a little bit, but he hasn't faced a whole lot of competition and hasn't been very entertaining with the title. Uh, I know his injury wasn't his fault, but the lack of talent they've thrown against him you know, has been really disturbing in a way. They've had plenty of people out there they could have thrown against him for that title, and they just won't do it. I mean, there's people out there like Swagger. Him and Swagger could have had a good series. Um, even even our truth even though he don't match up with him strength-wise, he can match up with him with some speed and extra moves there and had a few decent matches. Not a good angle, but some matches at least. It's no worse than throwing the Miz in his face nonstop. I'm for crying out loud, let's get some more people a chance up there. Um, Kevin Owens is due at this point. He came in and fought John Cena, almost took his title, didn't quite get there. Uh, a lot of people were mad about it. They wanted Kevin Owens to come in and succeed because he's a big indie favorite out there. A lot of people knew him as Kevin Steen before, and they just really wanted him to come in and beat Cena because Cena has that love hate thing with the fans. And it just wasn't right uh, for him to come in and immediately be at the top. Everybody has to come in and start somewhere. And he got put over real well by Cena. I don't care what anybody says. He put him over. He didn't get his victories, but he put him over. And that helped him a lot. In this case right now, 
I believe Owens is going to take the Intercontinental title tonight and be the new champion. He's going to hold that title for a little bit. And he's going to work his way back up to the U.S. title. And he's going to work his way up to the ladder until he hits that World Heavyweight Championship run. And he's going to get it. But he's not going to get it now. And once they do build him up and he gets it, I think he's going to hold it for a little bit. I don't know whether he'll be a heel or a face, but he's going to get there and he's going to get it. But tonight, Kevin Owens takes the Intercontinental title. That's my pick for that match. Now, you got two more matches to go for the night, and there's no real telling what order they're going to come in. I've heard rumors that the Seth Rollins-Sting match will go first before Cena, simply because the world title match is more important to him, and he wants to be more fresh for that match. If that's the case, then they go first, and uh, whether they go first or second, I don't care which way they go. I truly believe that Seth Rollins is going to beat Sting for the title. I don't know if it'll be a straight, you know, straight up victory, you know, clean victory, or if it'll be with some aid from somebody else. But there's no way, as much as I would love to see Sting win the title and say that he's held all of them, that I can see them putting him over cleanly over um, Seth Rollins right now. The youth, the face of the company, the, ch the champion. The only scenario I see with Sting winning is if Sheamus comes down to make it a three-way and throw his money in the bank contract in and cash it in and something happens to where he, th he throws like his bro kick on uh, Rollins or Rollins hits his finisher on Sheamus and Sting comes in and puts a finisher on the next one and covers one of them for the quick win. That's the only way I see it happening or if once again the Sheamus angle comes in to where Sting um, gets a pin on um, Rollins, maybe from some outside interference from Sheamus once again, and then uh, Sheamus cashes in real quick and puts a bro kick on Sting and takes the title at the Night of Champions. That could be a scenario. Anything short of that, I think Seth Rollins wins cleanly so he can prove once and for all, and he's taken that, I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, he's slowly but surely taken that image off of being the cowardly champ by cleanly getting victories over people here lately without the authority at ringside. Which is good. That's what they need to do. So, uh, once again, I'm going with uh, Rollins over Sting. And when it's Rollins versus Cena, no. Uh, Cena's going to get the U.S. title back. Rollins is not going to carry both, you know, nonstop like he has right now. Cena's going to get it back. There's no Jon Stewart tonight to make it happen the other way around. Cena's going to win, and I have heard rumors they stocked up on a bunch of Cena t-shirts for U.S. Champ as well, so I'm pretty sure that's a sign there, a little telltale sign he's probably going to win the title tonight. Um, well, that's my predictions uh, that I've got for tonight's show. Hopefully I do better than last time. My whopping 40% was not very stellar for the last pay-per-view. I'm hoping I definitely improve on that. And tonight we actually have a special segment we're going to throw at you. We've got a good friend of the show named uh, Josh uh, from What Does the Josh Say? And um, his partner, Twirl. And they're going to be giving you their input and their predictions of the pay-per-view tonight. And if you guys will, give them a look on uh, YouTube. Go check them out. Uh, they're very entertaining. Uh, you never know what they're going to pull off, <laughs> whether it be predictions or a skit or whatever it may be. Um, I understand that... Uh, the Josh had a little bit to say that I'm not as charismatic as he is and might not have these monster good looks he says he has, but look, let's face it, he ain't got a body like this, all right. That's right, I did it. I did it. Ain't no shame here. So we're going to go ahead and bring the Josh in now and let him uh, and Twirl give you their predictions or what they think of it, and then we'll be right back with you. Enjoy them. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special appearance by the Josh and Twirl on Body Slam, the competition, in partial promotion of the upcoming return of the Josh Says. Tonight we're taking a look at this uh, upcoming pay-per-view, Night of Champions, we're starting off with a kickoff show, uh, the Lucha Dragons and Adrian Neville versus the Cosmic Wasteland of Stardust and Counter and Victor. Um... Personally, I'm pulling for the Cosmic Wasteland myself here. I think they probably should pick up the win. Being Neville and Amel just got the win at the last pay-per-view. Yeah. 
It's time for Stardust to get one over on Noble finally. So we're in agreement on that. We're both thinking Cosmic Wasteland. Uh, we're going to shift gears now and talk about the Intercontinental Championship match. Uh, Kevin Owens and Ryback. Uh, it was announced on Monday Night Raw that Ryback would be defending the championship against probably one of the most loved or hated uh, people brought up from NXT. Uh, the indie fans love him. Guys like myself and my yeah, wife here love him. Love him. Uh, well, a lot of other people like to talk about his weight, well that's not really much of an issue when you consider the fact he moves the way he does. Don't remember people go uh, bitching about Vader being fat, but in this one, we are, I do believe we are both also in agreement, we both are pulling for a Kevin Owens over Ryback yeah. win, whether that's what actually happens or not, that's what we're pulling for, I think it's about time. Um, Ryback's been hit or miss with the championship, I uh, was excited to see him get the belt, but he hasn't really done too much exciting with it. I mean, it's hard when you're up against Big Show and Miz all the time, and that's about it. Yeah. First opportunity. Um, either Owens takes it tonight, or we build into some, uh, not tonight, uh, at, at the pay-per-view, or we build into something else with them uh, a little down the line, and Owens eventually takes it. Either way, that's how we're calling it. Uh, we're starting with the U.S. title match. Uh, Seth Rollins, who picked up the title at the last pay-per-view due to interference from Jon Stewart to prevent John Cena from tying Ric Flair's record. Or, you know, beating Ric Flair's record for the championship. One, two, I, I don't, Beat. I stop paying attention. Um, so Rollins is defending that U.S. title against John Cena. Um, I'm not sure how we're both on this one. Personally, I'm pulling for Rollins over the two. That's what I'm thinking. For, it just kind of makes more sense. You figure poor Rollins is dual defending tonight, so, or Sunday night. So yeah, it looks like we're both pulled on the Rollins end. Uh, I could see a Cena win and Cena going back and defending it again, which I guess would give him something worthy of doing. But I guess it's all going to play out mainly into how they end it with the World Championship. I do not see Rollins leaving with no titles, um, though I suppose it could happen. Uh, on the tag team end, we have the New Day Rocks versus the Dudley Boys. Uh, I'm sure many of you are pulling for the Dudley Boys in this, but man... Despite what she might say, there's one important thing to know. New Day Rocks! New Day Rocks! Remember that. Divas Championship, Monday night, we saw what was considered a screwy finish where Nikki Bella would end up retaining the Divas Championship through the use of Twin Magic disqualification, even though Charlotte got the pin on Brie Bella. Um, many people are expecting that Charlotte's going to walk away with the belt here at Night of Champions. Uh, I do believe that's what you're yeah, thinking. that's what I'm thinking. I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm kind of hoping for a Nikki Bella uh, ret uh, retention. Uh, I don't doubt Charlotte might be worth uh, having the belt, winning the belt. Uh, even breaking Nikki's reign, uh, her record-setting reign, uh, but I'd rather see it go to somebody else like a Becky Lynch, uh, who has not had an opportunity uh, to actually hold a women's championship or a Divas championship, whereas both Charlotte and Paige have already been that, uh, that, have already been down that road. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, we're gonna shift gears now to probably what I consider the most boring match on the card, and it's sad, because I'm fond of both wrestlers, but, you know, with a broken wrist, coincidentally the same thing many of, uh, the cause to this woman's fans have had issues with as well. Um, both male and female alike, mind you. Um, we have Ziggler and Rusev with Lana out of action for, uh, from a messed up wrist. Uh, Summer Rae still in the corner of Rusev. We saw some recent stuff between Ziggler and Summer Rae, perhaps yeah. messing with that there. Um, I have to be completely honest. I love both these wrestlers, but I don't give a fuck about this match. I really don't. I was bored by the match. Uh, last uh, the, the, the last match, I'm not looking forward to this one. I imagine Ziggler's going to get the win. Um, yeah, probably. Both feeling the same way. I don't know if she maybe she feels a little more excited, not, but yeah, I don't. I'm not. I love Ziggler. I love Rusev, but I, I can't wait for this angle to be over. Yeah, I'm done with it. It's it's lost everything. So much so that I'm just gonna say the hell with it. We're gonna move on to the next thing. Before uh, the next match we're gonna talk about is the second six man uh, match. We have the Wyatt family against the portion of the uh, the Shield. Uh, many people talked about a possible reuniting of the Shield with Seth Rollins not very likely to happen. Outside of that, there's four major rumored people who could potentially be the third man for Dean Ambrose 
and Roman Reigns. Uh, most popular amongst it all is recently Daniel Bryan, uh, who's been out with a concussion, who says his doctors cleared him, but the reason doctors haven't. Um, huge fan reaction, obviously, if it did end up being him. Uh, next, another talk uh, has been about Samoa Joe being moved up and joining them. Another huge fan reaction. Another one that came out as rumored speculation is there have been rumors of a leaked image uh, for the match, a graphic featuring Baron Corbin from NXT. Uh, many of us aren't expecting that to be the case. It wouldn't quite fit with his character progression down there. Also, not really a big fan of Corbin. We don't need two Roman Reigns in the ring. Um, the last uh, one has been rumored to be Eric Rowan, who last I knew had a, a severe leg injury uh, that had kept him out, thus the introduction of Braun Strowman. Whether that is him or not, whether he is ready to go or not, I'm still not thinking that's the best option. Um, we discussed this a little earlier, uh, and she does like who I want to see, who I think will be. I'm going with the Swiss Superman, Cesaro, as being their third and final member of the team. He's not booked. Huge fan reactions. Got not much of anything else to do with Tyson now for a while. Could easily match power with Strowman, and it would look amazing. So we're going with him, and as far as the match goes... Um, I love the Wyatts and all. If Cesaro's on the team, I want to see uh, them yeah. pull out the win, and I think they will to make up for some of the losses that Cesaro's been getting. Then again, right now we're one and one on the Roman and uh, Bray thing between the tag and the singles. Um, I would kind of partially rather see the Wyatts uh, come out, unless there's a Cesaro uh, addition. I'm pretty sure she probably feels the same way on yeah. that. Finally, we come to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match, where Seth Rollins defends the... WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Sting. Now, this is uh, an interesting match for the two of us to discuss here. Um, we've discussed this previously at length uh, beforehand, um, and here's my take on this. Um, many people believe that Sting deserves this WWE Championship win, uh, deserves his win in WWE, deserves, and the thing about that is, is see, wrestling's not an old man's sport. It, it, it's a young man's game. And Seth Rollins is the young man here. If you look at this match between the two of them, Sting has nothing to gain from this. Nothing than another title that he hasn't held just to, to add to the accolades. Where Seth Rollins picking up a win here over Sting means a major, major victory for him. Especially if it happens to be clean. He defeats Sting. That proves his ability to get it done in the ring. Um, now, there's no doubt that Sting hasn't busted his ass for the business for years now and is not one of the probably most recognizable and probably one of the better wrestlers that have stepped foot into the ring. But this is one of those cases where, like we all like to bitch about here on our interweb critic group of people in the IWC, um, a part-timer. This guy is not a full-time wrestler. He's not going to be wrestling every week. Uh, he's not going to be at every show. Whereas a guy like Seth Rollins is going to. And Seth Rollins is still going to be doing this 10 years down the line, most likely, unless some freak occurrence happens that causes an ending or a shortening of his career. Otherwise, Seth Rollins is going to be around for quite some time. Sting is not going to. This is where we invest in the long term, not the short term, not the immediate payoff, the instant gratification that causes so much of an issue for wrestling fans now. They want it and they want it now. We're all guilty of it. Um, I was just as guilty of it a few months back where I was pissed off because Kevin Owens didn't win the U.S. Championship from John Cena. I wanted that instant gratification. I wanted him to come in, beat the big dog, and take his fucking belt from him. It wasn't necessarily necessary, though it would have been nice, and people st still talk about how that could have changed things a great deal for him, but that's irrelevant. They have another opportunity to, uh, and then the champions for Owens to pick up a mid-level uh, mid title, now that he's been on the roster a little longer and working with a couple of the other people. I'm still putting on uh, pretty good matches. The instant gratification isn't the important part here. We don't need it now. What we need is someone who's still going to be here one, two, three, four, five years down the road, still doing what he's doing now, and, and that is the long-term payoff. So I'm pulling for Rollins here. Whether Sting wins or not, I mean, I'm not going to 
throw fit and uh, complain and cry and say I'm never going to watch wrestling again. It's a show and it's going to be there when, just like all the shows, you don't always like the way some things are written, but you still keep watching. And don't tell me you're not going to because you're going to. Shut up. Um, no, I know she feels pretty similar in the same situation. Yeah. Um, sad. He was always one of my favorites as a kid, but I wish this would have happened for him years ago when he was still semi in his prime and able to actually put up a good fight. Not saying he's horrible, but he is aged. He is getting slower. He's not what he was in his prime. Well, there's also the possibility of maybe a Sheamus Cashier at some point to, to mess around with the title. Uh, but overall, I'm pulling on Rollins. And Rollins, even though I still would like to see Sting at least one time, even if it's just a short one, just one time, to say he has done it. Well, there you have it. Uh, that is the Josh and Twirls predictions for United Champions. Um, feel free to come check us out on the JoshSays.com, and don't forget to subscribe to Body Slam the Competition on YouTube or visit BodySlamTheCompetition.com. Chris Adams, he knows his shit. Granted, he might not be as most must-see as this face and as electrifying as this whole everything, but he's a good worker. He's, got, he's a blue chipper right there. I tell you, blue chipper. So subscribe. Yeah. All right. That was Josh and Twirl with their predictions of Night of the Champions tonight. What would you guys think? Uh, are they on the money? They got the right ideas? Who do you think got it right more, me or them? Uh, it's kind of a good competition. I think we kind of seen eye to eye on a few things. Uh, I don't think we agreed on all of it, but I think we uh, can definitely agree they get some good ideas. The idea that they said that Cesaro might be the third partner against the Wyatts was good. I completely forgot about Cesaro, and I don't know how because I love him. I wish I'd give him a good title run of some sort. A U.S. title would be nice for him to have. Uh, I don't see him. Uh, I don't. I don't see them changing his way he's going to face Cena for it or anything. And I don't see him beating Cena clean while Cena's, you know, still on top right now. But uh, I would love to see him get a good title run of some sort, other than a tag title. But I don't know if that's going to happen. But good call, guys. I completely forgot about Cesaro. Um, other than that, I think they got some really great predictions out there. Um, I like a lot of what they said. Uh, we're going to be working together a lot more here soon. You should see a lot of what the Josh says and probably some of the competition working together. And I hope you guys enjoy the combination we got there. It's a pretty good chemistry we have together. So, let us know what you think. Uh, your predictions. Uh, drop them off to us in the comments below. If you're not currently a subscriber to the show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, be a part of the show. You know, we love nothing more than to talk wrestling. That's what we're here for, and that's what we're made to do. And the more of you to join in, the better the conversation gets so until next time when we have our recap of the review show my name is chris adams and you guys enjoy the wrestling goodbye